Well, welcome to our fourth episode already. This is Carlos Gonzalez. I'm your host, and this is Mosaic Art Behind the Scenes, a former graduate from the Escuela Mosaicistas with us today from Spielenbergo. His name is Matko Kesele from Rica, Croatia. How is that? You have mosaic artists from all over the world joining into this podcast. Um, he actually studied in Spielenbergo 2000, 2003, so that's a while back. I was actually in school with him back then. He was a grade higher than me, and we had a lot of fun. We had a lot of fun. He is currently the director of Kiwi Creative Space at Rika, Croatia, which is a shared art studio with other creative artists of all mediums, and he's also known for doing mosaic restorations from the Roman period that date back to the 20th century. With that in mind, his mosaic artistic side has led him to have mosaic interventions, exhibitions in his own city, and has worked in community projects to share everything that he has learned. He's also a mosaic teacher and collaborates in group mosaicism with great mosaic artists around Europe. And luckily for us, we have him in the studio today so he can share his knowledge about restoration and his artwork. Welcome to the studio, my friend. It's been a long time. How you been? Yeah, good. Greetings yeah. from Croatia. Yeah, uh, very well. Nice to see you. Congratulations for your new project for the podcast. It's a uh, thumbs yeah, up thank for you. the mosaic art and the mosaic uh, lovers and mosaic uh, lovers and fans around the world, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah, it's a it's a nice thing. Nice thing. And you know, one of the things that surprised me when I went to school with you, how good your English was. I mean, I think. Ah. Most of the students, I think your English was like really good. So did you learn English uh, in school? Like when you were a kid, do they teach English? Because you speak it really yeah. good. Yeah, I, I did, but uh, I learned in, in school. But most of the learning you, you, you practice with just talking random with people about everything. But uh, the good thing is in Croatia that the TV... It's um, like all the movies are in original language. So when we... Oh watched okay. uh, Seinfeld or uh, Friends or <laughs> <laughs> yeah. something okay. like this. We, oh, we so listen. you have their personalities then. Okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> so we listen exactly to the voice of the actors. Not uh, We have just the subtitles. So that's, uh, that's a good thing. Uh, well, good I didn't thing. know that. That's yeah. interesting. Yeah. So you're a big, you're, a, I mean, you've been doing mosaics for over 20 years, kind of like what I've been doing, but you've been over there and you've been doing restorations. You've been doing um, self uh, creative art, like on your end, you do a lot of creative. I mean, you did creative art when I went to school with you. You're one of the creative uh, mosaic artists that I was always working at these cabins that we stayed in Spielenbergo. Um, they don't have them anymore, but uh, we used to stay in these log cabins and all the students would get there from all over the, all over um, different countries and then we just all go to school and um when we left school we would do projects in our cabins and uh, uh, matko was like my neighbor so he was like with the older group uh not i mean just a year uh, ahead of school but somewhere even younger that stayed in the house and and to be honest with you we had a lot of fun and i always saw you working working with mosaic so i'm glad you're still doing it what are you uh what are you up to yeah well uh, spielenberg was quite uh quite a story uh, in my in my life, uh, so I was uh, 18, uh, young and uh, very uh, ambitious to learn. And uh, <laughs> yeah. uh, after school, I was uh, often going back to our cabins and uh, to continue to do some some mosaics for myself and uh, just practice. And uh, I don't know, I, I really enjoyed the atmosphere there. It was all uh, positive. I have still a lot of friends and. Uh, that I collaborate also on some projects. Uh, so yeah, it, it's uh, it's really a great, uh, great, great period. Of, it's a great of, experience. Great experience, great, great experience period in my life. Yeah, yeah definitely. Yeah. yeah, and you know, that's how I met you. And, and you know, I consider you a friend, even though, you know, like once you finish college or you finish a certain school, um, people just have their own paths and their own, uh, mm. their own stuff. And, different, and since we're from different countries, it's, it's not as easy and, and back then we didn't have social media. We didn't. We barely had internet. I think there's just one bar that had internet at that time. So. Yeah, I had my first phone in 2000. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. It was uh, with the small antenna. Yeah, so really. Basic. So tell me about your mosaic. I mean, you have a particular style of mosaic. You think um, you have your own style. I mean, you learned the techniques and the rules and everything that I learned also. But um, I consider you to be a mosaic artist, like an artist that basically create stuff um, once they know 
almost everything that you can really do in mosaics? I mean, there's a lot to learn, but you have your own style. Can you tell me a little bit about like what what do you think when you make a mosaic? What style do you use? Do you do you just look at the material and that's what what you kind of develop on what you have? Hmm. Well, it's a bit on both sides. So I can start also from a, um, from an idea that I want to develop, but sometimes I can also start just from the material that I have already in my studio or something like this. Or I can combine both. So doing the subject that I use that I uh, that I want to 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 make with the materials that I already have uh, in uh, just just close and uh, available maybe possibly for for free recycling materials uh, or yeah, a lot of people do that marbles uh, or uh, stones pebbles uh, whatever comes um i wouldn't say i have my style or something i had some uh, some project that was that were inspired by the um like cultural heritage that i have here from croatia so that were um, uh, based on maybe some landscapes inspired um, that are quite unique uh, from Croatia, let's say Mediterranean area, but also some uh, like uh, crafts like, uh, I don't know how you say, lace, you know, like uh, the women that are doing that. Uh, the stitching? Stitching, something like yeah. this. So, so I like this, uh, this thing that it's... Uh, um, actually very similar to mosaic like uh, when you think about patience that you that you need to put so it's really something really tiny work precise but uh, with completely different material you you use the... so you really before you start a project you really think on the design and on the materials I mean it's not just like oh I'm just gonna do a mosaic I have some extra materials so you really I mean I, I honestly I think you do have you have a style of just really uh, new stuff, new mosaics that nobody uh, has been is doing or has done. Um, that's the style I'm talking about. Like you, you grab that concept, that idea, and then you you put it to a different level and you make mm -hmm. something out of it in a mosaic. Um, yeah. Which I'm sure... Yes. Um, usually, I do some uh, experiments before I I make like a series of. Uh, so, like for an exhibition, for example, so to make a series of uh, the same subject. I try to make some examples, some experiment. Experiment was the best uh, uh, material or technique uh, in mosaic uh, to use to get the best, the best of it. So sometimes uh, a project say uh, remain just on the on the like dead end. You know, it's just yeah. stop. Yeah. At the beginning Not looking because, good. Uh, gotta gotta stop it. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, sometimes I, I just stop it maybe on one piece, on one uh, sample, mm -hmm. uh, because I realize that uh, maybe or I don't feel it or I don't uh, yeah. like how I... how it uh, looks like. It's uh, it's a part of the process that uh, sometimes comes uh, ends up good. Sometimes yeah. it's just uh, a process that uh, that I can uh, maybe l learn and. Uh, avoid losing time maybe <laughs> yeah <laughs> when, when, <laughs> losing time because it takes a lot of time to make mosaics and then it's yeah i call it i call it the zone you know like you're in the zone and then once you you work a while and then you if you see something that's not working then you just that's when you decide okay should i just keep doing it or just start from from zero yeah. again yeah it's a process yeah i think uh, in all arts maybe you, people have uh, have a process where they have the part where they experiment and then they decide okay this is the best I will work on that. Can you tell me a little bit about uh, mosaic restorations? I mean, over here in the U.S., uh, there's not that many projects of restorations just yet, just because, I don't know, the buildings aren't that old still, you know what I mean? So yeah. uh, I know you've worked in a couple of restorations, so um, I know it's a little different. I'm sure people who are listening to a podcast, I just want them to kind of get an idea of what that restoration um the complicity of it or what what are kind of like the the steps or processes maybe you can kind of elaborate from maybe like one to five or just kind of like things that that you know of your experience what you've had to uh, do to to get one done mm -hmm. um so i wouldn't agree that you don't have a mosaic storage store in uh, in the united states um you know the, there is all this period that was quite prosperous for the mosaic like in the 
uh, at the beginning of the 20th century, so in the period of uh, Art Nouveau, when uh, the mosaic technique was uh, again like really established and uh, well all the crafts but uh, in in the states you have quite some yeah i was nice saying more i was saying more of like the ancient ones like that you used to like the ancient like yeah. roman and greek mosaics i'm sure like yeah. the newer mosaics i'm sure there there's definitely has to be some restorations but i've never really seen projects i mean maybe there are out there uh -huh. but like the actual the roman and like the the real old mosaics and yeah. those are delicate, you know, because you're talking about like centuries ago. Yeah, yeah, few few thousand years old. <laughs> yeah, just a couple. Yeah, well, does, well, does that put you nervous? Like, does is it nervous? Like when you start working it, like, am I going to mess it up? Am I going to break more stuff than um, actually fix it? Or you just kind of with experience, you know what? To do? I, I I know what you what, what I do, so I I yeah I I I I. I I, I know how we'll uh, f finish the project and mm -hmm. how it looks like. So so I don't have that uh, stress. So uh, they contact you? Like if someone wants a restoration done, they'll contact you. They know that you do that. They'll contact yeah, yeah, you yeah. and then they'll... What's yeah. like the next process? Like the material? Like you know, like you try to have to find the material for it? Well, in the, if, for, for the Asian mosaic, you, it's uh, not very often to make uh, re reparation so that uh, that you fix, that you put new materials inside, but you fix the existing one and maybe just uh, some small holes that are uh, maybe that lose the tessera. But uh, again, you use the same material that are from the archaeological site, uh, uh, you know, loose materials that uh, that in they can uh, you can use it to fix some small small yeah. parts of the mosaic but uh, I, I don't like when uh, restorer use new materials to to make like a um, the picture the the entire picture of the mosaic if half of the mosaic it's loose you know it's yeah. uh, inventing it's not a, a technique uh, of uh, restoration so um uh, it's it's quite uh, quite uh, nice uh, here because Croatia was also part of the Roman Empire, so um, mostly we have uh, this uh, uh, Roman remains, uh, archaeological sites uh, mm -hmm. by uh, by the um, on the coast or uh, on the on the islands. Uh, so I live by the sea, Rijeka. It's mm -hmm. a shipport, so. Uh, it's a beautiful well, place. I mean, I've only seen yeah. it in like tour guides, but uh, the beaches uh -huh. are, are are amazing from what I see. Like on pictures, yeah, well, it's it's more an industrial city, but uh, it's a nice combination of Mediterranean and uh, industrial uh, contemporary. So it's a it's a quite a it, it's a quite a good mix. <laughs> so nice. uh, yeah, I, I when, when there are uh, restoration like this, uh, they are always like. Uh, um, these sites, these mosaics are protected by the Ministry of Culture, like uh, um, national uh, heritage. So I have uh, this uh, uh, permission by the Ministry of Culture so that I, I can work like a professional restorer. So it's not that any anybody the first ca that comes that can do the restoration. Yeah, but you, yeah, you, you definitely gotta know what you're doing. Qualification for for that and experience. So um, I always uh, work for the when comes this this kind of restoration it's always by the ministry of culture or some uh, um, local city or a town or maybe the restoration center national restoration center so it's always uh, somebody that contacts me to to help them or to be the, like an external collaborator collaborator yeah. or something like this yeah and that happens with the experience that you have of just making mosaics. So I'm sure like in your city, they, they know you're a mosaic artist and they know you can, you create mosaics, you, you have the possibility to restore them. So they kind of know that, that you're there. So in case they need to contact for a certain project or nearby, you know, you have a lot of friends, you have a, yeah, yeah, yeah. You have I, a lot of I, friends I, that work on mosaics too, right? Yeah. I, I, I don't, don't stay only in, in the Rijeka. It's not a big city. So, um, I'm freelancing, so I'm uh, I'm used to travel uh, for work. It's yeah. not a problem for for me. I like to I like to travel, and uh, when when I can work uh, traveling, it's it's even better. So here's a question: like the the restoration talking about again. The, is there a 
thin set or do you use the basic cement that you've always used when you use like when you install a creation project like what's that is it is it you just or lime rock or is it just kind of you have to simulate exactly more or less or, or is there something new that you use to install it once you have because you i'm sure you make the piece right like what's missing to be mm -hmm. very similar to what you need to and then and then while you're there you just even maybe go piece by piece or maybe just a little a little spot that you install mm -hmm. what what do you do you install it with like new materials or do you keep that tradition of ancient like uh mm -hmm. materials underneath mm -hmm um yeah usually when uh, you restore a mosaic on the site you have to use the lime so the original material that were that was used uh, like like yeah, in ancient time yeah. yeah but um sometimes we we have a situation when we detach the mosaic from the site and then uh, uh, it can be put uh, on some uh, panels that can be moved oh. and okay. uh, exposed in the museum and here you have different kind of uh, materials uh, that are based on lime but have a, bit, a little bit of cement uh, inside and some other maybe uh, more modern uh, materials but uh, the important is to keep it reversible so that in any time you can again detach the mosaic and clean all this uh, maybe material yeah. because who knows maybe in 10 years uh, the technology will come uh, come with something uh, new that it's less invasive or uh, you know better for uh, for the mosaic yeah so they don't break you said uh, i know i talked to you about um before how the climate does a lot of uh changes in mosaic installations with the cold yeah. the extractions you know like the interaction with the cold and the hot and you just have to be very careful in when you install mosaics in that part also because it's just something yeah. that you do not want to make a big mosaic right you don't want to do a, a really nice mosaic and then install and all of a sudden like a week later you're like they're calling you and they're like hey uh you have to come back because there's something wrong with it <laughs> right yeah yeah yeah. but uh, sure when when you're doing uh, something for a uh, open space you always need to do, think very well what material to use how to glue this mosaic how grout it or not grout it so there, there are some 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 parts that you really have to think about it before starting the project because uh i don't know somebody who is uh, uh who order a mosaic uh, for from you uh they have one uh, vision of it but when you start thinking about all these uh, details maybe that are not uh, uh on the first side for 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 them you you make them you know like a reality check and uh, <laughs> so things yeah. can uh, change quite uh, quite easily because you 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 need to make a good mosaic that can last uh, yeah. uh in for for long long time uh, as as possible but uh, yeah th there is always compromise uh, between the um restoration or between a new mosaic uh, and so if uh, everyone and needs a restoration you call matko right yeah. <laughs> basically yes. i mean because i don't know that many who do it so i i know that you do it i know you have you've done a couple of them so if if yeah, anyone yeah, yeah. needs the restoration mosaic yeah. uh new back in the day antique with centuries old yeah. he's also i mean he'll and he's willing to travel so just yeah. because yeah. he's not yeah. a doesn't mean he won't come to the u.s or won't go anywhere because you know he's a mosaic artist so we as mosaic artists we we go and search for work i mean mm -hmm. if there's a mosaic mural that we need to do we'll go wherever it needs to be done and we might do it in the studio but but we don't we don't mind traveling we love traveling actually right yeah <laughs> definitely definitely yeah actually in the last period i worked on some uh, mosaics from the uh from the 20th century so from the uh, 60s from the from the 70s years so is this period uh, let's say after second world war when the uh, especially in Croatia, so ex uh, Yugoslavia, there is this big uh, industrial uh, like um, movement, and uh, so all the, um, the 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 country build uh, 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 or uh, how to say uh, there there were many ar architects and uh, artists that yeah. uh, that were rebuilding the country and the artists were always involved to put uh, some artistic pieces.
in these new buildings or in monuments or uh, just uh, public sculptures. And, uh, you know, after 60, 70 years, it's time to fix them because they were um, mostly made from glass, uh, mostly industrial uh, mosaic uh, glass and um, yeah. They, they the only the only way that you they, they use it was with uh, cement and uh, cement it's not really the best material uh to use in the yeah, mosaic no. uh, especially when it's outside it's uh it's really tricky but so uh, industrial yeah. industrial mosaics um people might not know what industrial mosaics yeah. are but those are basically the, the the squared ones that aren't irregular and they're really thin they're they're the ones kind of like for pools and bathrooms yeah, those are like, they come in sheets know. Yeah, yeah, they come in sheets from so the pools. Yeah, that's yeah, what we but, mosaic uh, artists say. Industrial is just because we, we kind of know because they're they're done industrially in like big masses. So they just you just and the lots change. You get a certain color, and eventually that color won't be the same. So always it's hard to find certain colors eventually because they'll just not make them anymore. Mm -mm -mm. Yeah, actually, there, there was one uh, small factory near uh, Pula. It's about one hour from my city, but oh. uh, they closed in the in the nineties. Uh, oh. They they had a small production of um, of this industrial mosaic and uh, most of these uh, um, artistic mosaics that were made in the area uh, the the artist used from there. Uh, this uh, these little tiles to to make yeah. their public uh, i've seen how they practice. make it i've seen i've been to colorines the plant over there and i've seen how how it actually comes out liquid mm -hmm. from like yeah from yeah to a certain yeah, degree. The, the process I think it's is... over 1600 Fahrenheit, I think. Okay, um, yeah. Yeah, or 1800 or even 1900. I know, I mm -hmm. mean, you start fusing glass at like 1437, more or less. Mm -hmm. Yeah, with the Fahrenheit. Um, Celsius, I think it's like seven, 800 Celsius. Because you mm -hmm. use Celsius, right, over there. Celsius, yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I had to learn that. I had to learn... Uh, I had to learn a couple of things, um, the metric Ooh. system, and then here with inches. For, I still use metric system, to be honest with you, when I do mosaics. Oh, really? I, yeah. Okay. I think it for me it's a lot easier. Your your mosaic, um, your mosaic card. I know I saw there's there's in your in your uh, Facebook profile. Do you have a website that people can look? Uh, at yeah, website? I have on uh, Tumblr by my my name. You, yeah, so Tumblr. Mark, okay, if they look the, up your name, they can look up your artwork, your your, yeah, your mosaic Tumblr, projects okay. that you do. You do community work also. You do a lot of projects with the community. I saw there was a fountain that you did. Did you do that design? Because it looks amazing. No, so that that's a restoration. I did it. Oh, that uh, was the restoration. Okay, yes, there, there was a restoration. So um, this fountain was also part of the decoration of this. Uh, uh, mm, uh, how to say like a government uh, building from uh, yeah. Yugoslavia per period and this artist was uh, um, was asked to to make uh, a decoration and it ends up like a small fountain and uh, he made just a base uh, with this uh, wavy move, move, movement uh, design. Yeah, it's different uh, colors. It's very uh, yeah, inspiring yeah, yeah. to look at like for a fountain. Yeah, yeah, if, you, if you get yeah. a chance to look at uh, his webpage and mm -hmm. um, flicker and then he also if you look him up in facebook he also has a, a facebook profile so it might even be easier to look up at facebook and his name is matko caselli he's a really good mosaic artist and yeah. he has he's a, the group that of friends that he has i know some of them i think most of them um because i know one maybe he kind of left school right when i got there a bit it's called mosaicism it's a group that they formed when they were in school after they graduated they they, I mean, there's a lot of friends that everybody made at that school. So Matko made uh, this group, not him particularly, but just everybody thought it would be a good idea to have this going and just keep in touch and do works. And and someone's from like the Netherlands, another one's from Germany, someone um, different places. Do you want to tell me a little bit about that group, Matko? Yeah, so um, basically we, we had this idea because mo most of the time it happens after the school in Spilimbergo that uh, when when we finish everybody just spread, uh, everybody go back uh, to their uh, countries and uh, just maybe stay in contact like through Facebook. But uh, we, we just had this idea 
because we we were such a good uh, combination in uh, in that period when when we studied that. Well, you uh, drank a lot together. That, that might always. be another one. <laughs> <laughs> great, no, great party. That wouldn't yeah. be the case. Not a lot of wine in Italy. I don't think we we drank wine when we were there. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so we we had this idea to 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 do something to uh, to to stay in contact. Um, more, I don't know, more, more physically than just vi virtually. So we yeah. decided to to uh, to like uh, made this association, uh, like a group of uh, yeah ex uh, artists, uh, ex students, and uh, because we are s such individuals that everybody do uh, its own style uh, mosaic uh, own yeah, technique. Yeah, everybody's. Or, uh... Very material. original. So, I mean, they're great yeah, mosaic yeah. artists. Yeah. Very. So very the cool. idea was to stay together and do the group exhibitions. So when we did yeah. some exhibition, it's really interesting to see, um, like seven uh, seven people uh, yeah. with a different uh, mindset, uh, doing uh, different stuff, but still uh, all uh, different. What does it mean, mosaicism? Yeah, what is that well, word? Well, you know, it's like a, a bit like a mosaic philosophy, something like okay. this. <laughs> yeah. You know, so some movements where that have ism uh, on on the end of the of the word. So we decided also to to keep this uh, beginning of mosaic and this ism like a, a bit like. A, uh, yeah, it's very modern. I mean, you guys did that a while back. Uh, when did you start? Like 2002, maybe? Ooh. No, 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 I'm no, sorry. Late, like 2012, late, 10, maybe? Uh, I think maybe 2008, something, yeah. something like this. Yeah, yeah. it's been because, on for a while. Yeah, yeah. Uh, because uh, they, they are not only from my year. There are some, uh, some people that, uh, you know, two, three years uh before Apart and after from, my yeah. study, so but, but they're but, really good artists. They are really yeah. Good. But it's it's cool because uh, we all meet in some point uh, during uh, our study. So when I was on the third grade, I met the people that were on the first, or when I was first, yeah. I met people from the third. So it's uh, yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a nice story. Um, actually, it's uh, we we are all spread. Uh, um, in Europe, so Croatia. And there's Italy. a couple of people in Germany, right? Like a couple of girls in Germany. Yeah, um, yeah. Uh, from Germany, uh, from France, uh, Italy. Uh, yeah, yeah. And um, yeah, it's 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 not really easy to to keep to to keep together because you know everybody have uh, its own life. Uh, yeah, and you know you have kids. You you gotta they take them to school too. I mean, it's just <laughs> you can't. <laughs> you know, I understand. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's so it's so nice that you keep in touch though, and you work, and everybody, most of them work still in mosaics. Do they do they yeah. work in mosaics? Most of them. Uh, everybody from mosaism, they are still working in, uh, oh, in mosaic. Wow. Yeah, yeah. Wow, so we amazing. really keep uh, keep uh, t together because uh, it's, uh, somehow we are pushing or mot motivating each other to yeah to continue to do more or or, or better or whatever. So it's it's a quite a positive uh, and you work in projects uh, together group. also right we did some uh, group uh, projects uh, or uh, just when we have an exhibition during the exhibition during our stay of uh, one week or 10 days something like this we made a group mosaic that later we exposed together and uh, yeah well that is so cool man i yeah. you know i i still talk to a lot of people from the school but uh it's it's kind of hard after a while you, you know everybody has their own um paths and everybody just yeah. i mean most of them still do make mosaics but some just decided to do something else and i think that's awesome that you have that group and eventually mm -hmm. um you're more than welcome here in the u.s hopefully we can try to do something in the future here at nc mosaics uh you're all invited and, and if i can also interview any of them i'm i'm be very happy to talk to them just just because they're friends of mine from back in the day and um so look it up mosaicism it's actually spelled m-o-s-a-i-z M mosaicism so that way in case you want to look it up in Facebook they also have a profile and you can also see like their work and I'm yeah. telling you there is amazing work I mean you know they've been doing it for a long time and they know what they're doing so so look them up and and Michael has some some really cool mosaics that he that he does um, I wish you could I could do, describe it the way that I that I look at it of like the design that he has he, he showed me a mosaic earlier today 
before we started the podcast of this mosaic of a self-portrait. And most artists make their self-portrait, like they'll paint themselves, like, you know, Van Gogh or just Cezanne or just different artists. But he actually made a portrait of himself in a mosaic. So when I say mosaic, most people think it's just like on top of a certain surface and it's just like a certain method, like a direct method or indirect method with certain materials. So why don't you tell me uh, a little bit, explain, and I will try to add some more words, more descriptive words, so that way people who are listening know what you made. Mm, okay. So this is, uh, so I just turned 40 and uh, I think <laughs> was... <laughs> It's a nice. it's a it's a good number. I'm to older make. than yeah. you, so you're okay. <laughs> yeah, okay. We still look good. <laughs> yeah. Well, we try, right? <laughs> yeah. So I, I think it was a bit uh, time to make uh, a self portrait. Uh, you know, people uh, some that are more narc how you say narcissistic, uh, nar narcissist, narcissism, Narcissi narcissistic. Yeah, yeah narcissistic. Okay. Narcissistic, yeah. yeah. Uh, they do a lot of uh, self-portraits, but this is the this was my first, and it's uh, really hard to understand that it's uh, already uh, that it's actually me uh, on this portrait. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, because you you need to see it like uh, really from distance, and uh, because it's you know, with this uh, pixel technique and uh, with these gaps uh, large between the with, between between the stripes. So, but uh, I, I enjoy to to make it. I would just want to make something uh, a bit different and uh, not doing it like really like uh, uh, a traditional you know, way of just doing it on top of, way of making yeah. portraits. You know, like doing like a photography re replica in in mosaic, but uh, a bit using uh, modern technology. So I, I did my uh, uh, a photograph of myself and uh, like. Uh, uh, change uh, into a, uh, a low, um, uh, how to say, like a pixel uh, resolution. Yeah, you pick, you pick, I mean, from what I saw in, in the video, if you show it to us, like right now, yeah. like, so people can, yeah. when, they, when they log into the video, we'll yeah. look at it right now. We're looking at it right now in the video. He's actually showing it to me and yeah. we can see it. So if you, if you look at the podcast on the youtube channel yeah. you can see his mosaic and it's in the background and that's his portrait sorry sorry, sorry for the mess <laughs> yeah well mosaic artists have studios so and we always have to work so there's always stuff on tables so there he has you see how it moves now that is just original like i said he has his own style he does like really nice stuff so for the people who's who are listening it's kind of like a living room blind with these stripes long stripes that go down all the way to the floor and each of those stripes are pixelated so they have pixels of colors but they're made out of mosaic tiles industrial tiles that yeah. have this gradation to make it look like it's his portrait that's what the mosaic looks like so Correct. if you look at the video you'll definitely see it so and they're individually so what what happens is like you if you if you grab your hand and you swipe it a little bit slowly these all stripes of his face move how cool is that? I don't know. Yeah. I've never seen something like that, so I think it's it's pretty amazing. That's just people yeah, that, you I, know, think way way out of just the traditional way of making mosaics. I, I wanted also to make it a bit uh, like interactive, so that uh, people can yeah. come when uh, when the pieces say ex exhibit that will be actually next next week for yeah. first time exhibit. Awesome! Congratulations yeah. and happy birthday. When's your birthday? Ah, uh, it was uh, eight uh, December. Oh. Okay. December, just, Happy uh, late yeah. birthday then. Yeah, yeah thanks. <laughs> Wish you many more. And I'm sure <laughs> yeah, the exhibition is going to be awesome. Yeah, yeah. It's a group exhibition, but uh, it's the first time that I will uh, expose this, and uh, I'm happy, happy for this to to see it really in a in a gallery exposed well with the good light, and uh, I will encourage people to to try to 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 get in touch with the with the with the piece and uh, yeah. move. Move yeah, because my... you know, in most most people who make art, you're not allowed to touch. Like, ah, oh, don't touch yeah. this. This is a painting. Don't get close. Don't do this. But like with mosaics and certain ones, and and people who've done it for a long. I mean, we don't really care if you touch our mosaics because it's if you've made it really good, there's mm. nothing that's gonna happen to them. So you, you no, can definitely no, no. touch the, the mosaics. Yeah, of most yeah. people. That's what they're yeah. there for. You could so you can feel the texture, the mm -hmm. you know, and and see how it moves and just that's that's what we try to create. So mm -hmm. I'm. Mm -hmm. I'm really happy to talk to you today, Matko. I think we have um, 
a good run on our podcast. I think uh, I will definitely invite you back once we do a lot more. And you could maybe even show us around your studio next time. See what um, kind of art piece. I know you saw, I saw on the video a, a couple other ones you have hanging. Like that banana that was really famous in this um, <laughs> museum that yeah. sold for a lot of money you kind of made a replica of a mosaic of that and it looked really yeah, cool yeah. From, from where I'm at. so and yeah, um yeah. i just i just think you're a really cool person man keep it keep it like that for forever you were always a friend of everybody you're very kind and, and obviously a great mosaic artist and that's what we want to see we want to share here in this podcast people like you who've made mosaics and who are still making them and just get that recognition um for all these great mosaic artists so thank you for being in the podcast um more than welcome to come to the u.s to teach or whatever you want to do you're more than welcome and anybody over there in mosaic system say hi to them and we'll keep in touch definitely cool? yeah thanks thank, thanks a lot and uh just keep going with this podcast and uh yeah big 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 thumbs up yeah yeah Thank you. Well, I'm going to try. That's what we're doing. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, I'm glad to see you like always and see you soon. All right. Yeah. See you soon. Thank okay. you. Bye.